So the Airstream uh, welcomes James Drake. We're having a studio visit in his West Side Santa Fe studio to talk about his upcoming show at Site Santa Fe, in which he'll have a video, Tongue Cut Sparrows, at Talking Pictures. And what we're seeing here on the wall is a new 24-panel um, charcoal drawing piece. And first, James, I wanted to ask you, I know that over the years that you've worked, you've alternated between making charcoal drawings and working in video. Can you say a little bit about how those two things go together during your career? Yeah, actually, uh, the videos always come first, and I always make a video of whatever I'm interested in, and then it might be immediate, or then it might be 13 years later, like this particular piece, uh, after the video, after the fact of filming the video. So I use a video as a sketchbook in a strange way. I actually wouldn't have thought that. I would have almost thought the other way around because, of course, your monumental charcoal drawing, City of Tells, uh, came with video pieces that you did when you set but a table and left it in the field. That was actually Texas. the same thing because I, I set up a video camera out in the, the wilderness and then uh, these different animals would come to the table and either devour the table or, or uh, explore the table or whatever. But the then I made drawings, the two large drawings, the pigs and the snake and the other drawings, based on that video. So when people see your video work as they will at Site Santa Fe, they're actually, in the case of Tongue Cut Sparrows, you envisioned that to be a, a, a work for video. Is that, is that I correct? did, yeah, because the people are, are, are signing. Um, and by signing, I mean they're using sign language that was invented in prison, not for the hearing impaired, so that they can speak with their loved ones, with their brother, sister, whatever, whoever, uh, without having to go through the bureaucracy of going inside the jail. So they can stand outside the jail or prison. This happens in, in an aside. This happens all over the world. And uh, they don't have to go and go through the bureaucracy, as I said, and they can uh, communicate short notes, long uh, passages, whatever they want to. I had them signing uh, poetry. I see. You mean you actually, you asked yeah, them to sign poetry? Yeah, and we would go through different poets, uh, Lorca, Borges, different poets, and they would say, oh, I want to sign this one to my boyfriend. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, that's really interesting, because of course I know that there's, uh, you have a huge appreciation not only for art history, but for literary precedents, including uh, Melville and um, Cormac, your friend Cormac McCarthy. He's <laughs> hardly a precedent, he's your contemporary, but we were talking about this a few minutes ago. People often really want to assign narrative to your work. Do you feel that it's there or it's something that others... Well, I think it's there, obviously, but, but I want people, and this might be a cliche, but I want people to bring their own attitudes, their own feelings, their own experiences to a piece. Um, it has a narrative in the sense that there are two people that meet, uh, they're happy to see each other, they, uh, they express different emotions in the uh, conversation, then the meeting deteriorates and they end up uh, uh, saddened and disillusioned. Like everyone on the planet has had an experience like that. So even though he's in prison and she's not, I want it to be more expansive than just that. So hopefully people can bring their own uh, so over the frames, in a sense, of this drawing series, the communication between them breaks down. So one kind of can yeah. sees in the series a progression that you might see oh, absolutely. in a video medium. Absolutely, sure, absolutely. Yeah. These were the words that they were actually saying. For instance, that, you know, I want to feel in touch you. They don't know the people like us. And you can even see by the, uh, the verbal uh, aspect of it that the communication is starting to break down and deteriorate, and, he, and she even says communicate. I'm reminded looking at this, I, I keep thinking back in a sense to the fact that the drawings that I'm more familiar with from before, from when you had your Site Santa Fe exhibition in 2005, are somewhat about the world of civil society, uh, socialized behavior, where it devolves into utter chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always that lurking <laughs> beneath the surface in every, uh, in every banquet, every, every conversation, I think. That's, that's part of it. Also, I might uh, just interject here that at the show at site that opens uh, sometime this October, I'm going to show two videos. Tongue Cut Sparrows is one, uh, 
than the other videos called Exit War Is, which I filmed 30 years ago, and I've never shown. You were born in Guatemala. You no, were, I was born in Lomba. You're, oh, you're born in Lomba. But we moved to Guatemala, to Central America, my family did. And I you was, lived there as a child. I lived there as a child. And then you lived in your adult life in El Paso. In El Paso, along the border. So you've often incorporated into your work figures like uh, La Melinche, who was a translator of Cortez. And she was the translator. She also bore him a child. And she, to be a Malinche in Mexico is not a good thing. That's a traitor. You're a chingao, which is a, you can probably say that on this, because that's a, <laughs> it's a very, very bad term. It, it means worse than whore. Right? It's something exactly. that's got a connotation exactly. of whore, but also somebody who's abandoned yeah. the people. Or the, abandoned the people, abandoned your culture and everything. So that, yeah, that's exactly what that means. So I've used her in a lot of drawings and that type of thing. Because of living in, Me I lived, we lived in Mexico as well as Central America. The borders are really important areas. That's where lots of uh, tensions and lots of, uh, of uh, thoughts, good and bad, happen, regardless of whether it's the U.S.-Mexican border or if it's a border in uh, Afghanistan or Iraq or the, or the French border. You know, there are all these tensions and all these different sensibilities happen along a border, regardless of what border it is. So hopefully, you know, maybe years ago, 30 years ago, when I first started doing some of that work, it was perhaps very literal. Hopefully now it's not quite as literal and is a little bit more, I'll use that term again, expansive. What all people feel. Yeah, it goes to the universe. Yeah, that's hopefully. Well, and the other thing I think really has to be said is that your work in charcoal is virtuosic. It's, there isn't anyone to compare you to because you've done things in charcoal that are uh, incomparable. Or is it something that you can I like to do it. That's basically the bottom line, is it brings me a lot of pleasure, and also it's probably visually one of the very first forms of expression to take a piece of charcoal and to make a mark of it. Were you working in charcoal when you were studying with Lorser Feitelson? Okay. Uh, Actually, he was a huge influence at the uh, Art Center in LA. This was back in the 60s. And uh, Lorser was a uh, uh, very instrumental, and uh, I used charcoal, charcoal, you know, the same charcoal I use today. So, and you were saying you've just begun your new direction in drawing. I think it's a new direction. It just evolves from the other stuff because I was making uh, basically cutout drawings, and then I was erasing some of the areas of charcoal through these cutout drawings and then I started really liking the cutout aspect. So I did some of these 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, something like that. So to me it's all interconnected. In fact, I think all the work's just one big piece. Yeah, absolutely. But you said the cutouts had to do maybe with the, I don't have the words in your mouth, you're uh, related ahead. to your South American, your, your, your sojourns and Well, yeah, sure. That's, Rococo. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, because you're able to, uh, yeah, my uh, Rococo longings, that's <laughs> my that's Baroque said, longings. Your Baroque longings. Which is, you know, you can't deny some of these things that you fall in love with, and even though you, you know you probably shouldn't love them, you do anyway. Test our Melville knowledge now. <laughs> All right. Now, now small fowl flew, flew, flew screaming over the yet yawning gulf. A sullen white surf beat upon its steep sides. It and all collapsed, collapsed in the great shroud of, of the, the sea. sea. Rolled on as it rolled 5,000 years ago. James Drake's videos, Exit Juarez and Tongue Cut Sparrows, are part of the Talking Pictures group exhibition at Site Santa Fe, October 10th to January 2010. And in summer of 2010, James Drake will show Tongue Cut Sparrows at the Albright Knox Gallery in Buffalo, New York. For Adobe Airstream, this is Ellen Berkovich in Santa Fe.